Little Nightmares 3 is official and it will feature two different kid protagonists named Alone and Lo, put in a post-apocalyptic setting known as the Nowhere, a necropolis, being sandy and having a steampunk theme. It's not all different however as we have the hungry and never satiated guests back roaming around aimlessly, seemingly wanting to find their way to the food haven, the maw, where the first game took place in. Despite the concept art and comics not being canon, it seems the third installment will in fact use some of the original ideas, with countless guests roaming around in a city. One of the largest monsters low and alone will encounter is a gigantic porcelain doll-like baby who is known as the Monster Baby. And finally, we keep getting glimpses of a sinister looking mirror with smoke spreading behind it, which is reminiscent of none other than the lady, especially that it seems to be broken as we know from the original game, the lady had a major weakness and that was looking into the mirror. But I also have another theory, that this mirror could be one of the ones found in the original Little Nightmares comics, transforming whoever looks into them into twisted and warped versions of themselves. So I think many of the mind bending and twisted concept ideas are playing out in the third installment, which I'm extremely excited about. Little Nightmares holds a very special place in my heart and it's the legacy of the channel and how I started my journey of becoming a theorist. So watching the trailer almost brought a tear to my eye, thinking of the good old days. According to some research I did, the female looking kid having a wrench is called alone and the one with the plague doctor mask is called low. In a way, I can't lie that I was really looking forward to continue with Mono and Six's story, including the other kids in the original comics and the new comics, and their designs are a little off and out of place, as if they are just generic online multiplayer skins. Alone has a more practical attire, wearing the goggles to protect herself from sandstorms, seemingly, but low wearing a plague doctor mask with holes for eyes and a cape seems really off as a random online skin. If you remember, we had a field trip with Y6 had her yellow jacket and Y Mono had his paper bag mask. They also played important roles in the actual lore of the game. Six started wearing her iconic and unique yellow raincoat, differentiating her from the dark and somber color tones of the environment, which she started wearing as she was cold, while Mono wore his paper bag to hide his real identity of him being doomed to become the Thin Man, seemingly as if he was specifically targeted by the other entities just for that. But here, I can't wrap my head around why one of the characters would have such a face mask and I hope it won't be so random that it won't have any significance towards the story at all. Also, a major implemented mechanic in the game is actual online co-op, where each character can be controlled by a different player, but at the same time, it can be played solo with the counterpart being controlled by AI. Although it sounds promising for multiplayer lovers, Little Nightmares is a game about mystery and lore, and it really concerns me that the devs could be putting too much work and attention to creating a multiplayer game that it could badly impact the story. I really don't want to be cynical, yet I don't want to hype it too much for myself to end up disappointed. So I guess we'll just see how that will work out. <laughs> Unlike the gothic setting of the previous installments, the third game takes place in the sandy and steampunk-esque necropolis or the nowhere. As the name suggests, it's a city of death, which could explain why cities or locations such as the Ma or Pale City were so successful despite their fever dream-like setting, filled with danger, death and misery. The third game depicts a world devoid of life, it seems like a post-apocalyptic wasteland with nothing to offer. That explains why there are so many suitcases and the inhabitants of this world want to emigrate or permanently move from the wasteland into other nightmarish locations such as the Maw or the Pale City, despite their obvious flaws. I can't help but really think about what we saw in the trailer about the mirror. 
There's a mysterious mirror which is continuously shown with a sinister and menacing smoke or fog spreading behind it. Towards the end, we see the mirror as if being shattered, which is reminiscent of the lady and how mirrors were her weakness. The lady's quarters in the mall had many shattered mirrors as they were her curse, weakening her, so maybe we will see the lady come back. Mirrors also play an important role in here, which act similarly to the TVs in Little Nightmares 2, acting as portals for the protagonists. There's also another major theory I have about mirrors, which I will keep for another dedicated video. <laughs> One of the major antagonists or monsters in the game is known as the Monster Baby, which looks like a porcelain doll and chases the protagonists. Unlike all the other monsters in Little Nightmares universe, the Monster Baby actually lives up to the name and is gigantic beyond any norm. The monsters in Little Nightmares are large, but no one has ever been as large as this entity. Something interesting to note is that the baby had one working guy which acts as a floodlight lighting up the place and turning any person exposed into stone. This is identical to the eye traps found in the maw and the nest and very little nightmares which turned anyone exposed to it into stone. So there's some sort of consistency with the eyes going back to how the major overseeing entity above all entities is the eye entity which seems to be the orchestrator of this nightmarish world. The eye is symbolized throughout the games and it even turns Mono into Thin Man in the radio tower. The eye also turned six into her monstrous form and we can assume that her unsatiable hunger and darkness, dark six, are the result of the eye tampering and manipulations. One big reveal in the game showed that the guests will come back and we will get some sort of clarity to who they are. In the original comics, which turned out not to be canon, the guests were seen in the Pale City roaming about. But in the second game, there was no sign of them at all, only being seen in the maw. Are they different entities than the viewers or are they similar type of adults or beings that have been turned into such forms being fit constantly as if being farmed? If that's so, how are they still obese in the necropolis, a land devoid of life and food? Despite that, we still see many suitcases, evidence that the inhabitants of these lands are constantly on the move to go to different places, such as the maw. At the moment, the third installment is scheduled to be released in 2024 for all the major gaming platforms. To be honest, it was such a big reveal, with some previous minor rumors spreading about its release but nothing canon or official. Unfortunately, Tarsier Studios, who were the major dev team behind the previous two games, left the team, leaving the game to Supermassive and Bandai Namco. I don't know how this will turn out and if the game will have such intriguing setting as before. A lot of the times games which don't have any clear plot lines, which try to connect all the dots fail miserably and really ruin it. A prime example would be Dark with a Q, which was one of the most intriguing games I played since Little Nightmares, having no clear plotline. But after the release of its comic book trying to make a story to stick on the whim, it really didn't make any sense and ruined the experience for me. The comics were simply atrocious, especially that I was really looking forward to find out what the story is all about. The soundtrack designed for Little Nightmares 3, however, just as the first one they used for the trailer, sounds as if they will have the same fantastic soundtrack in the previous games, so I'm really hyped for that. I wonder if it's going to be the same composer, Tobias Lilia, who composed such fantastic pieces for the second game. Going back to the trailer, at the very end, we see a giant excavator dumping a lot of trash in a large landfill with piles of trash stacked on top of each other. So, so is the trash coming from the nest in Very Little Nightmares, the moth from the first game, or the pale city from the second game? 
keep tuned as I'll go over more details soon enough.